Hello and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. Breaking news, Rusty Rasmus has had to make an update to the Springbok squad due to an injury of um, to Jan Hendrik Bessels. As a result, uh, both Bulls players, Volko Lo, as well as Jan Krobler, are called into the squad to cover uh, hooker and prop, given the fact that Jan Hendrik Bessels was in as a utility forward. And uh, gives you a bit of insight as to why it's so useful having a utility forward, because how one player has been ruled out, additional two have had to be then drafted in. But the Bears no call up specifically for uh, for Volko Lowe, I think, for who who has been absolutely brilliant since joining the Bulls. Scrummaging has been has been phenomenal. He's involved in this box setup, but I think if it wasn't for such good depth at, at prop, he would have been playing a lot more Springbok games. But I think this is the beginning of a sort of Springbok recall, and I expect both of these guys to play a few minutes, hopefully, in the end of the year tour, um, but many more minutes in the years to come. And before we look into exactly why I've been called that, please do smash like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. So Rusty Rasmus has said the following about the situation, uh, saying it's always sad to lose a player to injury and we wish Jan Hendrik all the best on his road to recovery. But this opens up the door for Johan and Volko to make their mark against quality opposition in Scotland, England and Wales. He said that Jan Hendrik offered us the luxury of serving as a prop and hooker. But with his versatility out of the picture, we decided to call up a specialist prop and hooker. Johan has been part of the squad of the season and is really growing in his role and in the team, while Volker has been delivering consistently superb performances for the Vodacom Bulls this season, and he has been knocking on the door for a while now, so I have no doubt he will grab this chance with both hands. He said, we are certainly excited to see what they bring to the squad, while Volker's inclusion also adds to our player stocks as we continue to build our squad depth. Uh, what's very interesting about the Volker low call-up is that it suddenly means that we have got six props in the squad and uh, Thomas Toy therefore is currently almost sort of more covering loose head now than tight head given the fact that we've got three out and out tight heads in France Moherba, Vincent Koch and Volko Lowe. You've then got two loose heads in Kheros Dinekamp and Oxen Chair. Thomas Toy traditionally a swing prop although has been playing predominantly at tight head where since he's made his move over to Bath in the Premiership, where he was in the Premiership team of the season. So uh, very, very good prop stocks. And uh, I actually spoke about Vilko Lowe yesterday in the video we did about uh, players being unlucky to, to miss out. And uh, he was one of the big ones, I thought, that uh, especially in a position where we need to grow depth. So this actually might be a bit of a blessing in disguise. Uh, and that's not to say that, you know, you never want to see a player get injured. But uh, the injury to Jan Hendrik Vessels does mean Volker Lowe will go over and hopefully get some minutes. And I think tight head is a position that we are lacking a little bit in depth. Uh, Hooker maybe to a certain degree as well, I suppose. You know, after Malcolm Marks and Mongi Manambi, Jan Kobler is still very new to the game uh, at international level. We've got... Uh, uh, a young Javessels is a young player. Joseph Dweber seems to sort of fallen out of favour, although he's playing pretty well for the Stormers at the moment, so he's always got that option. But uh, we don't have the Dion Free option, for example. Malcolm and Starden, in theory, is an option, but I don't think you really want to go that route. You want to try and bring more specialist hookers in. Andrew Hugo Fent has been brought in, so this does also sort of build a bit more depth into the hooker position. So, yeah, not an ideal situation, but uh, you've got to look at the silver linings. And in terms of building depth, you know, adding those additional two players that haven't been around a, a long time, or recently at least, uh, it gives them opportunity to travel over there, train with the box. Um, because the box are going over on Sunday, in fact, for a training week in Jersey um, before they then move to uh, to Edinburgh in uh, the following week on the 3rd of November, where they have a full week in Edinburgh. So that week will be so vital for a Volker Lowe, who's not been part of the box setup for a while. He can then sort of acclimatize, understand exactly what the new box coaching setup means, spend time with Don Human, for example, um, so Don Human can get a better grip of exactly what he's all about. So it's a very important tour for, for the box in terms of winning all three games. But all of a sudden, we've now got two new players, not new from the Ancobler point of view, but players who have not gone on an outgoing tour um, and for Volker Lowe recently, not been involved in the box at all. So it's a very good experience. And a lot of people are moaning about the three mock squad, which I think is a bit strange. You know, it's it's still a it's an incredibly strong squad. And, you know, people have now got this obsession with building depth. And there's, there's building depth, and then there's giving players caps for the sake of giving players caps. You know, I don't think any other team, you know, bar like Australia or Wales, who are desperately trying to, you know, flip their team at the moment and try and find options, have probably given as many debuts and rotated their side as much as the box have throughout the year. I mean, the All Blacks definitely haven't, uh, for example. I don't think Argentina have. You look at, uh, at Ireland, they definitely haven't. So, you know, it's it's an interesting thing where, we, where, where you talk about the box not building depth when they are clearly the ones using the most players 
uh, in world rugby in terms of the top three, four sites in the world, apart from maybe also France, who send very much a B team out. But that's more to do with the fact that they have their resting period and agreement with the clubs rather than what the French national team actually want to be able to do. So let me know what you think down in the comments below. Please do smash a like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.